There we go. All right, so my name's Richard Doolin, and I'm with the Brookfield Emergency Management. I'm also with the Orange County Sheriff's Department Emergency Management. And um, I've been working since January when I took a course about opening shelters and how they work and how they should work through the Red Cross. Uh, myself, Pastor Mary, and my wife took this course. I believe P Pastor Mary might be showing up. She said she was going to. Um, and I became very interested in the general public and what we do, because I do the emergency management, but the shelter aspect is not my job. That's to be handed off to a shelter manager. And so further looking into it, I realized that nobody knows what they're doing, um, which, is, which is normal. You know, we all muddle together and try to figure it out. So my big goal is to be able to hand, to start a shelter here or at VTC, which is in our, our emergency plan, um, or using the senior center in Randolph as a warming cooling shelter. Um, also, I have a relationship with the, Leban the town of Lebanon, the city of Lebanon, um, to be able to use their shelter in the case of a, a larger incident, which the agreement with, with uh, Jim is that we will send volunteers down there to man the shelter, that Lebanon will not bear the full cost, that we will help with that. So in a huge incident, I would say, okay, can we do this? Can we get some volunteers down there? I was hoping for more people to come, but that will that will end up here, you know, hopefully in the in the here in the future here. Um, Please, can I ask a question? Yeah. What the job of the emergency management. Is this like a paid position or volunteer um, position? Most, most states, towns, um, large organizations like Dartmouth College have a paid position for emergency management. And their job is to look at what's happening within the facilities, within the town, and look at the infrastructure, stay in contact with the fire department, the DPW, the Board of Health, and all of that and sort of manage what's happening. And when something happens, to have a relationship, like I have a relationship with Kevin, he's the fire chief, and you know, the, the town DPW, uh, Tim, and you know, I try to stay in contact, they try to stay in contact with me during an incident and we try to figure out what the needs are for the town. And my job is to start finding those resources or communicate, you know, with what's happening. You know, so if Kevin and his guys are out dealing with an incident, that yes, dispatch for fire would take care of it, but sometimes something needs to be done that has nothing to do with dispatch for fire. So he can give me a shout and say, find somebody, you know, take care of this. And then I can get back to him and say, I found somebody or I, I didn't find anyone, you know, so it's, it's it's basically the, the catch-all, you know, and distribution of goods and services like the fans that we got in Brookfield. Um, the state was calling around, seeing who wanted them. Of course, I jumped on board for it and said, yeah, we want them. The cleanup kits that were sitting down at the town hall, uh, my wife and I were doing some volunteer work in Barrie and talking to our person that we're supposed to be dealing with with the Red Cross, talking with her and she says, well, at the end of the day, take what you think you, you can use. And there was five or six kits left. And I said, well, I'll take them all. And I'll bring them down to Brookfield and let people know that as best as I can that they're there. Um, so that's basically, there's more to it, but you know, um, gives you a sort of an idea um, of what's happening there. Yep. Can we introduce ourselves? Um, I don't think yep. So my name's Rich Doolin. I'm emergency management um, for Brookfield, also with the Orange County Sheriff's Department, um, director f for them. And you're next. Oh, I'm Emily Daniels. I'm the director at the Randolph Senior Center. And I had gotten in touch originally because 
we got some of those uh, air conditioners and one summer was very hot and I felt really bad that seniors didn't have somewhere to go. Mm. So that's how I'm involved mm -hmm. here. Mm -hmm. I'm Amy Gracia, I'm the treasurer here with Brookfield. Um, don't kill me when your tax bills come out. <laughs> <laughs> that's an emergency. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Um, uh, and I've been involved with um, uh, EMS in New Jersey. I was uh, an EMT and uh, did a lot of work for the first aid squad. I'm Judith Irving. Um, used to live down in Kibbe Road for 40 years. Uh, we ran Fat Toad Farm and then uh, just moved recently up to uh, above North Pond, living right next with my daughter and her family. Um, and I'm just now relieved of the, you know, joy of running a business 24 seven for 17 years. And I'm just really committed to Brookfield. I've been here for a long, long time and uh, interested in helping out. I did work in Barrie during the flood recovery for three or four weeks. So just, that just, I, get, I think that just showed me how much, how important it is for there to be community-based organizations to do something, because if you sit around and wait for anything else, you're not going to see it, I don't think. Uh, I'm Ann Hunts, and I'm a fairly new resident of Brookfield, and I received a lot of assistance during the last the flood, and I want to give back and help in any way that I can. Kevin Wheatley, Brookfield Fire Chief in town. Hi, I'm Devin, I'm the librarian in Randolph, uh, a librarian in Randolph, and just happy to help. Emery Mathias, town clerk and treasurer in Randolph. Uh, I was waiting around asking, expecting people to call Randolph and ask for help or say we're gathering a volunteer group. And I didn't ever get that call. About two weeks after it, the Vermont National Guard called and said, hey, we've got suits and gloves and all of that, and asked me who to reach out to. And they just delivered it to my office, but I didn't know where to send it all, so <laughs> figured it'd be time to know the world. Uh, Susie Zani, I work here at the school, uh, with the preschool. Pre um, I just just this summer looking at all the disasters it's like we've got to be prepared something's going to happen and and i want to help my community um charlie zani and um i also work for the supervisory union um we live on bear hill road so we're on the, on that side i didn't know what kind of i didn't this is interesting it's much more um, wider base. I was thinking very kind of community, um, a community type of thing. Um, so we just, you know, yeah, Brookfield. But that's, I mean, that's not bad. I guess you get more resources. It just isn't what I was kind of expecting. But just sort of the same thing. We feel like, you know, if we're not flooded out or, you know, in a disaster, we can go and help. And hopefully there would be that you know, resource available for us if, you know, we're in a disaster situation. So. Yeah. Cool. Yeah, so on, on that, uh, John Bentley, uh, chair of the select board, he and I were talking a while back ago. I've been working on this since uh, January, February, and finally got to this point of holding a meeting and trying to get volunteers. Um, he and I were both talking and we both feel, you know, let's put any ego, self-righteousness aside and look at this as we're community. It doesn't matter our town border. It matters about, you know, and, you know, I pick the Tri-Town because we are the same school district. We use the same resources. Um, this last incident that we had uh, Randolph opened up in Brookfield's shelter 
and they called e email and said, hey, we'd like to open a shelter. Of course, he said yes. Well, that was Brookfield's in their plan for that place. Um, so, you know, it doesn't matter who opens it. It doesn't matter what. It matters that it's manned. It matters that everybody's welcome. Um, and everybody is trying to do their fair share of helping out their neighbors because we're all neighbors. It doesn't. I live in Randolph, and I do stuff for Brookfield. Right. You know, it doesn't matter. It, it matters that we are all helping each other. Right. Period. End of story. So we'll get moving here because we're <laughs> using up a lot of time. Um, so the the local the local areas that that have been named as, as um, possible shelters is obviously the Brookfield School, um, that's getting vetted here soon. VTC, which uh, I spent a lot of time with the Red Cross reopening that because it went dormant. Nobody knew how to get a hold of them. I went there, got the information, fed it to Mark, the Red Cross, and re-put that on the map. So now that's a viable um, facility. The senior center um, we're working with, and they cater to the three towns as well. So that's part of our possibility of, of using that for cooling and warming. And you know we could use it for other resources, depending on what's happening. And also, I've been uh, working with Lebanon, the city of Lebanon. And I have an agreement with Lebanon um, that if we are sending people to Lebanon, because a lot of people work in Lebanon um, or the White River Junction, and they're, if they're stranded, the shelter's open, that we might be able to send volunteers to help and, and lessen the burden on that city and help them to help us kind of thing. Um, so that's all being in the works and is rough cut at this point. Um, the requirements for a volunteer, which I think everybody meets that requirement here, because um, I know most of everybody here, um, clean background check. You can't have any felonies or, or anything like that. Now, if somebody wants to volunteer for the, with this group and they have whatever criminal record, as long as, you know, there's parameters. We need help finding resources, we need help running copies we need help so they can help but not on the facility you know because they can't be on a school building or part of it with with a, a, a bad background um, the person needs to be able to de-escalate a problem so you know you, you get people walking in and they're upset because their home's floating away or whatever's happening in their life you got to be able to calm them down not blow sunshine all over the place but right. you know help them you know keep a, a straight head um, Rich, yes that solutions, which is part of second spring homes um, here in Williamstown they have what they call nappy training and that's exactly what nappy training is all about oh there we go is diffusing situations and staying safe right so that's, that's a great resource, and we'll get together and, and get that information. Um, so the, you know, just a thumbnail sketch, um, a volunteer's duties in, in, in a shelter will uh, bring in, you know, being trustworthy, um, respecting the confidentiality of, of our guests not judge, judging people, being judgmental. Um, giving, giving information to, you know, if, if you're working in the shelter, giving information to the shelter manager and also the EOC, the EMD, the Operation uh, Emergency Center or the Emergency Manager Director, giving them the information that they need to uh, find more resources or, or something of that nature. Uh, intaking of guests. And that's what you saw out front. Every facility that I've looked at, this facility, um, the Judd Building for VTC, and also the Senior Center has a hallway. So you want to intake people out there 
and start bringing them in, getting them to fill out the information. And if somebody says, is, is Joan in there? You don't give them that information because Joan might have a restraining order against this guy, Fred. Do you want to check in? Great. So Fred goes to check in. You have the information, which would be in this box, and you know this Fred guy's not supposed to be around this other person. So you'd call the police and say, we got a possible incident, please send somebody. And then they can be dragged off and justice will be served. Um, so you want to keep in mind that, you know, sometimes there's difficult situations and back to being able to diffuse situations. Um, check in with guests what, you know, if they need anything. Well, when you're checking them in, you want to see if in the next six to eight hours, do you need anything, any medication, any, and that's all part of the information that I'll give later the next meeting. Um, so you want to be able to, to do that and figure out who's doing what. I want to get some safety vests with emergency management put on them so it'd be obvious that um, myself and Kevin are, are working the shelter because we'll be glowing um, so you know that we're the people in, in charge of that facility at that moment. Um, be looking for a shelter manager or two shelter managers to sort of house all this information and then stay in contact with the uh, volunteers. And In the, so like I said, started, started this in January, February, started running with it. Obviously uh, having a, a relationship with the Red Cross and Lindsay and Mark are the two key, key people for contact, which I've been talking with them. I haven't talked to Lindsay too much because she's been on boots on the ground and uh, Barry. And so as soon as she lightens up, then her and I and, and uh, my wife are gonna go out for, for lunch and talk about all of this that, that's happening for here. Um, there's a relationship with obviously VTC College, White River Ambulance. Um, they are willing to stage an ambulance at any location that we have. Now by staging, that doesn't mean that they're gonna stay here. If the call comes in, they're out. But if no call is around and we've got 20 guests here that they'll be walking around and hanging out and chit-chatting, and at least we have some medical folks. I'm gonna urge anybody that volunteers for doing shelter to take CPR. Uh, it's not a requirement, but it would be good to have. And you know, any town worker or school worker should probably have that anyway. Um, and I, not, not to pick on, on Kevin, but firefighters are great, but we don't want you in the volunteering because you're going to have to run out and do your job just like I don't want police I, I won't be in the shelter. but you know I'm, I'm, a, I'm psyched that you're here um, another resource that we have after the after the incident starts happening we start opening a, a shelter the watch officer has been called the MRC is notified which is through Vermont emergency management their core of volunteers for shelters they're contacted by the watch officer that this shelter is opening and it's possible that we'll need help. So if we have 20 volunteers and they're out of town or they can't get there or just crazy stuff in their own lives, um, you know, I'm not gonna look, look down and nobody should look down on anybody that says, I will volunteer and they have their own stuff happening and they can't, that's understandable. We all have lives, we all have things, but having a ton of names and a ton of numbers to call is going to be perfect and that's what that's what I'm hoping to, to get uh, the Chandler um, the Chandler is willing to let me use their marquee as long as the power is not out use their marquee to put messages out to people driving back and forth to work and um, we can actually use the Chandler as long as their power to house people for a short amount of time. The, uh, I have a, a, a food dis distribution that is willing uh, to let me take food if we have to open this. 
the OSSD is willing to stock this with food and water if that's what's needed, um, or it might change down to the high school. Uh, the robocall system, Lane is willing to put out calls strictly for this town or all the towns that they have, and they have, um, let's see, Braintree on robocall has 147 people. Brookfield has 146, and Randolph has uh, 1,208 people that can be reached out. So if something ever happened, that's a great resource to be able to uh, use. I have a relationship with Green Mountain Power that can work on different areas, you know, if people are on oxygen, to try to get those areas turned back on sooner than later and different resources that are that are available. Um, Actually, uh, um, you can try to encourage people to, to, if they are on oxygen, to let the power company know. Correct. Because I use it at night. OK. And so they know that my husband and I both require it at night. Right. Exactly. So that's, you know, that's something that um, I don't know who can get that out, you know, Sooner or later, we're going to have to get the town offices to send out when they send something out, send a, a brochure. We've talked about it. I'm sending out tax bills in another week. <laughs> well, this is a good time to throw an extra piece of paper in there. Yeah. Uh, we'll have to talk about that. Um, I don't know. That's a good question. I should probably find that out. Um, I, I know 211 has its own system, and a lot of people don't trust it or a lot of people don't use it. And that's one of those things. But, you know, uh, the safety committee and I were talking um, about, you know, we should be ready as our own. You know, like, I've got a bunch of food in my house, but I need electric to run my heat. You got eh, a little bit in your house, but you don't need electric. Well, can I come hang out with you? I'll bring my food and, you know, sharing resources within the town. You know, that's something that is definitely possible kind of thing. Now, who wants to do it? I don't know. That's going to be up some, you know, down the line, we'll have to figure that out. You know, um, onto, the, onto this facility. This facility can house per day 77 people. This facility for sleeping quarters can house 38 people. Is that the school? This built this room right here. I was going to say, is it just this room? This room right here, yeah. It's 77 people yeah. in this room at one time. But to, sleep. to sleep, it can house 38 people. Now, on the stuff that I gave you, the COVID layout is what I want to go with now are we is that the, is that the number? yeah the, you'll see it a, a little uh, printout yeah so the the COVID layout for our shelter is how I want to go not because of COVID because of the flu because of the common cold because of whatever um, you know I, I want caught six feet apart you know from face to face and practicing clean healthy aspect it's it's something that we should be doing anyway and sometimes we won't be able to but you know the Red Cross will deliver 50 cots we need 38 well you can have a, a handful of malfunctioning ones or put some people in the hallway if we had to uh, Is that the school what's that, Is that the school closes if if we need to open a shelter mm -hmm. the school will be closed okay. Right. Not, not the shelter, but it's going to be bad enough that you, the buses won't be able to move safely. Uh, power is going to be out throughout the town. This place will be lit up because it has a generator. School's not going to happen. So that's not really a prob problem. If it is, then we can figure out something else. Um, VTC, for their, their location, can house in the Judd building can house 228 people. And sleeping quarters 
can do 114 people. The outer building can house just, you know, during the day, 129 building, uh, 129 people. And that's the, I'm forgetting the name of that building. The Shape Campus Center. So that, you know, there's two different locations that can be used there. In a major, during Irene, the Judd building was being used as a shelter and the other building was being used as relief for the Army National Guard, firefighters, or whoever. So that was their quarters. Um, hopefully we don't go into that aspect. Watching the time here. <laughs> um, the Randolph Senior Center can house just during the day 47 people by the square feet. And they, they come up, the Red Cross comes up with this number 20 feet, 20 square feet per person. And then it's 40 feet for sleeping. That's how they come up. So you measure the inside of the building and you come up with your numbers. Um, so any questions so far? So I don't, I don't know how everybody feels here. Are you on board with volunteering? and being a part of it. Okay. Cool. Cuz it, it's going it's going to be it's going to be during time periods obviously that we're going to have a hard time getting here or getting to the other locations. Um, and a lot of people don't use shelters. I would like to see two people in a shelter that's safe. Um, my suggestion would be bring a deck of cards because you probably won't see anyone. But if you do, that's awesome. If you see a bunch of people, we're in big trouble, you know, as a community. That means we need to start reaching out and getting more resources and more buildings set up. Are there options for providing transportation for people to a shelter? I had an agreement with um, Stagecoach, mm -hmm. and Stagecoach is no longer Stagecoach. Right. So, like right, so now I've got to re negotiate that agreement. I had an agreement at one point with Stagecoach that within an hour and a half during the evening they could get a bus moving. Um, during the day they already have buses moving. But there's a protocol that they have to do to get that bus on the road. So that's getting a driver, getting them to the facility to pick up the bus, to do the checklist, and so forth. So it would be about an hour and a half to, to get a bus on the, you know, Are there road. any models for, um, like, using phone trees? Like that's local, local that's, phone that's trees? something that we can definitely look at doing mm -hmm. in, the, in the near future. Um, but that's a great thing for the uh, robocall mm -hmm. system. It's people that are signed up with kids in school. So you could have four, four or three people, or two people, one person, for one student. So we don't have a real good number. It could be a grandmother, a sister, and a single mom for little Sally. We, we don't know. And I, I don't think that's a reasonable question to, to ask Lane to figure out. I mean, but we know that if a call went out, it would be worded in the such of, even if this doesn't concern you, please put the word out. Is there such a network for Meals on Wheels, for example? That I do not know. I, no. Mm -hmm. I'm just thinking of people who are harder to reach. Right. And how we're already in touch with them. For well, during, during this, this last storm, if Kevin wants to, he can... You can say, um, I, I called Kevin, and I don't know if it was already on his mind, and or said to him, person to person, hey, after later on, can you send a truck out, some guys out to the roads that are affected, and make sure that people are okay? And go ahead, Kevin. Yeah, that's what we did right from the beginning. Was um, all my volunteer by environment and Thank you. 
Harvard is, is basically really spread out all over the town and, and, and uh, checked on people. But you know, it wasn't a door to door check or anything like that. It was more of you know, making our presence known out there uh, and uh, going to the spots that we knew were bad and checking on those people. So, yeah. What about the emergency sirens? I, yeah, they do on top of the police department. I was told by Aldalfo that they worked. Okay. Um, I, I don't know if they still work. That would be something that I would love to see if it does work. Um, so that's something that probably the fire chief, uh, Scott, and the town manager should work on to see if they can put the word out that they're going to ring this thing mm -hmm. and see if it does work because that that would be a great resource um you know and, and put out a notice hey you should be turning on your radio right. your your local radio here in town to see what's happening and call people and let them know hey bad stuff's happening so that's I would I would love to hear that ring. Make sure it's after five o'clock because <laughs> I I want to hear it. <laughs> they used to have it at noon. Right. I Did they? Um, so I mean it's not unheard of. Mm -hmm. We've had it. Yeah. Cool. So that's that's pretty much all that I have to firmly say. Um, I do want to set up a, another meeting in September 28th at 6.30. Now, Brookfield residents will have to travel a little bit, and that will be at the, um, the Randolph Senior Center. Because um, my, my goal is, you all can see this if you're not familiar, a lot, everybody is, I guess, familiar, that's here, Fam that you can see this building and how it's set up and get an understanding of what is expected if we do a shelter here that people are checked in outside, people that are in here, nobody knows their name until we know who you are before we sort of let you in. And obviously in a shelter, uh, people can't come in and take pictures. You know, that's not permitted. You know, privacy issues. Um, and the media is not allowed in. Police obviously are allowed in and, and et cetera. But, uh, I would be watching, the town would be watching what's happening for weather-wise. We are, and why I'm, I like this building, is the safety committee um, fell upon a situation that they're building, a tabletop exercise, that started in March. And this storm that's going to roll in is going to happen, it's when, it will happen if they don't fix the power lines. A storm will roll in, it's gonna be snow, it's gonna to turn to rain and ice, it's gonna wet, and I don't know the proper name, but those huge towers with the big power lines, it's gonna knock those down, a couple sections of it, and it's gonna affect southbound. So it's gonna hit Vermont, New Hampshire, Massachusetts, and those cities, those states will be out of power for 17 to 30 days. What do you do? Roofs are falling in. Flat building roofs are, are collapsing. That's why I didn't like the high school too much for a location. That's why I don't like VTC too much. I like this. It's going to shed. And we're not going to have a problem with this building. So there, you know, the, the three states are working together through emergency management, what are we going to do? So that was another factor of this whole building and shelter and just watching what's happening around me. This has a generator. Has a generator and it will last, I want to say, I think he told me a week if it's full. Is it on propane? Yeah. I believe it's propane. Do you know? I don't know. I mean, you could take a, a gander at the machine out there. 
It would be a buried tank. Because it's probably in the ground. Yeah. Um, but anyways, there's, there's resources here. We can get resources. We can get food. We can get water. Um, Um, relatively well. We've we've got the high school stocked, and that will that will feed the the population for the high school and junior high for I believe it's a week. So, bringing food over here or feeding people at the high school, everybody that wants food, it's probably a couple of days. Um, you got local food shelves that are willing to give up. Food. Now, in, in, that, in that March tabletop exercise, we're sort of skunked. You know, it, it's what do you have at your house? You know, what are you willing to share? Um, here, we have nothing here. What's that? In this house, we have nothing. In this house, we have a little bit. We have some. We, we have some. Um, I believe they are preparing meals here. Yes. Yeah. Um, so there's some. But there's there's... It, it would be a lot of running around and checking what's available and probably first come first serve so my thing would be hit the shaws hit the you know say hey we need food we'll pay you later <laughs> i don't you know we'll figure it out later yeah well working up in barry um over the past couple of weeks to the churches which is another resource that Correct. i think we should think about in town here um yeah, I mean, they, they had immense donations from Cabot and Shaw's and Hannaford's. Um, they had more food than they could use, but how, is it, like how do you, in that case, they could get it to the churches. You know, right. They could get it in there. And then they had staff that were cooking. Right. And then they were distributing it throughout the community. But that's a real, there's a real system there that. There is. And, that, um, and, need to kind of and that's why I really. Um, want to if we have to open a shelter if we feel the need is to open a shelter we open a shelter and notify the proper chain of command as you're supposed to um, and getting ready to turn it over to the Red Cross because they have all the resources you know they have more and we can throw our resources into the pot as well and our volunteers into the pot and it would be a better situation to sit there and run a shelter that is a private shelter is insane because now you're responsible. So if Brookfield said, okay, we're gonna open a shelter and it's private, well, little Joey and Sally ripped that bubbler off that wall, the town of Brookfield's responsible for it. You know, that's, you're insane to do that. The best thing is to turn it over as soon as you can to the Red Cross, and now that's their problem. Do they have a time frame? 72 hours is what they say. Expect no help for 72 hours. You're on your own. Oh, that's good to know. That. Right. So the, the question was asked about um, something about the, the shelter, and I think we went off track. Um, but, you know, it's my, my goal is to open it turn it over because um, little Sally and Joey want to bring their dog because it's a comfort dog we as the town we don't have the resources to do that but once it gets turned over to the Red Cross they do and they accept that without a problem so how would we get notified by that sign-in sheet. Okay. What, what we're gonna do for the next meeting and, and invite some people. Let's get some more people to the Senior Center next month. And I'll ask um, Lou to put it on front page form again. Once we can put a couple of shelter managers in charge, I'm gonna step away. They're gonna start doing this. You know, obviously I'm gonna be involved, but I'm not gonna be the person in charge, um, the shelter managers will, and we'll build a system that will work. And it's going to be probably by text or by 
email or whatever. And it will be, we'll, we'll know in most cases something is going to happen. So today's Thursday. There's an ice storm moving in supposedly for Saturday. Well, guess what? Tomorrow I'm going to be on the phone with you guys and saying, look, we're, we're thinking about it. Can you do it? Great, 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 great. You can. Perfect. And then we're going to get into to the later part of the day. Hey, it, it looks pretty promising. We're, we're going to need to do something. Saturday morning, storm's rolling in. We're going to make a decision. You know, and by what's happening through the radars and through the other towns, we'll know we're going to do it. And, you know, having people scheduled for two hours, four hours, eight hours, or I got nothing happening, I can be there all, until it closes. You know, whatever you want to do, but we've got to have a couple of people committed to be in that shelter. And, you know, again, with the ambulance service, having them staged up this way or at BTC is a great help. Having some people in that, that know CPR and whatnot. That, not that we're anticipating any problems, but you've got to expect it's going to happen and pray it doesn't. Do we have, as a town or a series of towns, responsibility in any way for the interstate? I mean, I'm assuming you might have a close down for a prolonged period of time on the interstate, for example. I think the state dictates that. Do you know state anything about that? The state dic dictates if the interstate's going to close down. Do you know so anything? We know we, I know, but let's say it closed down for a prolonged period of oh. time. Who is helping the people who are stranded on the interstate? Oh. Oh. Yeah. Like, do, are they welcome into the shelter? My, my view is yeah. I don't care if you're from Connecticut and you're stuck. Come on in. Um, yeah. I mean, if you're from Massachusetts, eh, maybe. Yeah. You know, I, I really got to think about it for a minute. But if you're from my town in Massachusetts, you're definitely welcome. <laughs> but yeah, it's it's it'd probably be you know a little wing in it at that point. You know, how do we get those people off the interstate? Well, I you know I don't have a snow machine, but. You do. That person does. Go get them. Well, and there's the exit. Those are not the stone. Yes, yeah. Right. Yeah. So. Awesome. Any more questions? Yes. Okay, so materials <coughs> Right. Okay, so let me we got ten minutes. Nine minutes. Until we're out of time. Um, so a storm is rolling in. The state EOC opens. EMDs throughout the throughout the state are alerted that the EOC is opening for the state. A EMD, emergency manager director, is supposed to start watching that, that incident. That EMD is to alert their resources and say to the shelter, say to their, their coordinator, hey, this is what's happening. I don't know if you've caught it. You know, we might activate. Uh, then the, this, the, the storm starts rolling in, and I activated the EOC for this town during the flood. And it was a short amount of time. And I notified Kevin that I'm out there, Tim that I'm out there, I sent an email out to the, the, the town saying, We're, I'm up and running tailgate because I'm in Randolph, the incident's here, phone service sucks, so I'm working off my tailgate. I loaded everything in my truck and we're off, off to go. Um, I have a remote office downtown Randolph. Um, I let the, the uh, state know, the watch commander, what I was doing. So I was always in contact with somebody, letting them know what was happening. And 
you know, Randolph opened our shelter because theirs was at the fire department. They opened up our, our location. So I was like, great. That was my next step is to put email on alert that we might open something. So it's just all, it's all communication and talking with people. If we have a shelter manager, that person will be notified. And that person's job is now to notify everybody else and say, tentative schedule, what can you do if we open? And then as we go higher, you know, I, I might sit there and say, I don't think we need a shelter yet, but let everyone know. Kevin might call me and say, hey, Rich, get your head out of your tush, open a shelter. You got it, Kevin. Then I call the shelter manager. We're opening a shelter. Or the select board member might say, get it open. So everything goes through a chain of command and everybody will know what's happening. And presumably the, the pots and the blankets and the things that are needed. Right. Will be delivered in seven, within 72 hours. Water um, for this location. I believe the OSSD is going to handle. I need to clarify that. Um, the water, um, we don't drink the water here? Not out of the tap. Yeah. But we have water. Right. Within right. Within 72 hours, the supplies needed to open the shelter will arrive. It could. It could. It could be sooner. What I would like to do is I, I want to go forth to the town and see if once we get the shelter manager and get this built, is to get some supplies on hand. All right. What's that? That's what we need to figure out. So I have a location in Randolph that it can be left in my office. An office I don't pay for is given to me by the, the building owner. He lets me have that room because it's an unsaleable room. So it's my room. So I can put water and all that, but somebody's got to lug it. So we need to find a, a reasonable way of storing it. Maybe the town barn um, could house some water. No right. But we, we do need to figure that out. And that's going to be a collective. I think that's going to be the shelter manager and the volunteers. We're going to be working on this. So I'm out of time. It is next meeting. September 28th, 630, Randolph Senior Center. And everybody's welcome. I don't care what town. We all are going to be work. When, when things go bad, we're all going to be one. And I, I don't care if you're the EMD of the next town over. We all need to work together. We all are in this together. We all feed off of each other. We all live together. We're one community. So you have three minutes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> what do you, you talk about power outages. And right. Being a likely potential problem. Correct. When you are thinking forward, what are the other, and he, you might have something to say about this one, what are the other big possibilities that you think could happen that Power outages are, are a huge problem in the winter. During the summer, it's, it's difficult. Um, flooding is, is a huge problem. It all, it all depends on that storm and the which way it's coming, which waterway that it flows down, which uh, culverts get wiped out. You know, there's some storms that come in, we get a ton of rain, nothing happens. There's other storms that it's running off the right mountain or right hill area that we could get decimated. Um, so it's all about what's happening at that moment. In emergency management, you plan for a hurricane. Okay? We're ready for this hurricane. We're ready for the hurricane. A tornado comes in. We didn't plan for that, but you know what? We got a plan. Mm -hmm. Let's take the hurricane information and work with it around it to deal with the tornado. It never works out the way that you think it's going to work out. You got to be flexible. You got to be like, okay, 
this is happening, let's run this way. And everybody communicating with everybody. That could be a shelter situation, you know, um, that, that wouldn't be in a school. That would be a Red Cross, Red Cross response to those things. Do they have a faster than a three-day response to those things? I'm sure they do. Um, you know, and, you know it, it's, it's about the community as well. You know, the community can step up and say, geez, the Smith family got wiped out, they're home, I got a couple extra rooms. But let me see if I can't help them. But it, it's where we all try to work together. And the more people that we have, even if we never activate a shelter, the more people that we have in a network that are working towards bettering our, our community is so much better. You know, so you're not mucking out your basement all by yourself. <laughs> yeah, you did. And it was, you know, you just, it was, it was crazy just to see that stuff coming out of your, your home. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.